Hello and welcome to this industry forum overview of the new aerospace standard AS13004. This standard was written by the Aerospace Engine Supplier Quality Committee, the AESQ. It forms part of a number of interlinked quality standard which supports the AESQ strategy to create a series of related quality standards for use within the aerospace engine supply chain. It is expected that the standard will also be adopted by the aerospace sector supply chains outside of the aero engine supply. FMEA, where's that slide come from? Oh, can we start again? Yeah. Sorry. I've got to do this now. Sorry. Is this the wrong one? No, no, I haven't really. I tricked myself. I'd forgotten that I'd done animations. Oh, I see. Okay, let's just double check that we've got audio still. Hello? Yes, you can still see. It's still recording. Let's go back to the start. No, no, it's fine. Hello and welcome to this industry forum overview of the new aerospace standard AS13004. This standard was written by the Aerospace Engine Supplier Quality Committee, the AESQ. It forms part of a number of interlinked quality standard which supports the AESQ strategy to create a series of related quality standards for use within the aerospace engine supply chain. It is expected that this standard will also be adopted by the aerospace sector supply chains outside of aero engine supply. Failure modes and effects analysis, or FMEA, was developed by the US military as the MILP 1629 military directive and dates from the 9th of November 1949. It was used as an evaluation technique for reliability in order to depict the efforts of systems and equipment failures. The failures were classified according to the influence on the success, the people and the equipment safety. It was adopted through uh, the Apollo project and was followed into aviation and aerospace. So the FMEA process evol has evolved over a number of years. However, its roots go back to 1949 and the United States military. FMEA was first created in a format we would recognize today by NASA for the Apollo project. The benefits of FMEA were identified by the automotive sector with the Ford Motor Company being one of the first to truly adopt it. Other industries followed suit with the widespread effective use of FMEA with the, in the aerospace sector being a relatively recent introduction. Aerospace standard AS13004 process failure mode and effects analysis, PFMEA and control plans. This standard was created to establish common practice for effective process risk identification, assessment, mitigation and prevention. It defines a methodology to mitigate risk using process flow diagrams process failure modes and effects analysis, and control plans. In the journey towards zero defects, the more problems we can anticipate and address prior to them actually occurring in real life, the closer we can get to zero defects. Defects introduced into the process either by poor product design or poor process design and implementation impact on an organization's ability to achieve delivery, quality and cost targets. The result is the organization's bottom line and reputation suffer. Even with an effective problem solving process, the goal of zero defects cannot really realistically be achieved without the use of FMEA. Unless otherwise agreed by the customer, 
a process flow diagram, process failure modes and effects analysis and control plan shall be part number specific. The PFMEA shall include all operations identified in the process flow diagram. Details of steps within each operation shall be considered and included based on the potential risk. The organization shall use the PFMEA template defined within the standard or one with equivalent content. Any deviation to this shall be approved by the customer. The organization shall use the severity, occurrence and detection ranking criteria defined within the standard. And again, any deviation to this shall be approved by the customer. The standard provides ranking tables based on a 1 to 10 score. This gives guidance when defining the level of severity, which is the level of risk, occurrence, the frequency of which the risk may be experienced, detection, the ability to identify the presence of the risk. There are a number of ways in which risk can be defined. The two listed are relevant aerospace sector definitions. So the International Aerospace Quality Group, or the IAQG, define risk as an undesirable situation or circumstance that both a likelihood of occurring and a potential negative consequence. AS9100 Rev D defines risk as the effect of uncertainty and any such uncertainty again can be positive or negative in effect. A positive deviation arising from risk can provide an opportunity, but not all positive uh, effects of risks are opportunities. In this instance, the Australian Safety Bureau found that a number of oil feed stub pipes within the engine hub assembly were manufactured with thin wall sections that did not conform to the design specifications. The result, an unexpected engine failure. A part number based process FMEA might have exposed this risk in advance and action could have been taken before the engine failed in service. When considering the scope of AS 13004, we can say that it sits in the center of the uh, process operations, so incorporates the process flow diagram, the process failure modes and effects analysis, and the control plan. Supporting elements of AS 13004, such as measurement system analysis, are now also supported with guidance of AS standards from the AS AESQ, in this instance, AS 13003. Process flow diagram includes details of all operations in the sequential order from receipt of materials through storage and shipment of finished product. This should include alternative processes, standard rework and movement of product from operation to operation, as well as to and from external operations. The process flow diagram does not need to include processes for procured material components and assemblies. Process flow diagrams typically cover from raw materials, component receipt through to product dispatch. The process flow diagram and process FMEA are linked line by line by means of the process step number and the process step description. In simple terms, the PFMEA identifies the risks and controls associated with each step of the process. When we consider how an FMEA is created, then we start by considering functions and requirements, potential failure modes, potential effects, severity ranking, and then classification. We need to identify all functions and requirements within the scope of the FMEA, identify how each function or requirement could fail, 
This is known as the failure mode. Group associated effects with each failure mode. Identify severity ranking for each group of effects and then classify as key characteristics in line with the customer's or the organization's own guidelines. We then move on and consider potential causes, controls that prevent these causes, the frequency or recurrence of these causes, detection controls or controls that will detect if the concern has occurred, and then finally, the detection ranking. So we identified the causes for each failure mode, and we focus on the failure mode, not the effect. We identify those controls in place that will prevent the cause of the failure mode or reduce its occurrence. We identify occurrence ranking for each cause, identify those controls in place that will detect the cause of the failure mode and identify the detection ranking for each cause. And then finalizing, we think of the risk priority number. We take recommended action if the risk is considered too high. We identify responsibilities and timing for those actions. We record what action was taken, and then finally, we rescore RPM. So we calculate the risk priority number, which is severity times occurrence times detection. We prioritize action based on results. We identify actions to be taken. We assign responsibilities and target dates, record the actual actions taken, rescore and reassess risk. Going back to an AS 13004 requirements then, the organizations shall have a control plan uh, which will be applied as early as possible during the process development. The control plan shall comply with the following AS 13004 requirement, which is to list the product and process characteristics to be monitored during the manufacturing process, along with any required control methods. Controls and reaction plans specified within the control plan shall be documented with a work instruction or an inspection plan. And then finally, the organization shall use the control plan template as defined within the standard or one with equivalent content. Any deviation with, from this shall be approved by the customer. So if we consider that the process FMEA identifies the risks and controls associated with each step of the process, that the control plan further expands the controls needed to reduce the risk for each step. The control plan also identifies what reaction activities are required if the process or the product is found to be out of control during the manufacturing process. These reaction activities are often supported by work instructions or an inspection plan. The purpose of the control plan is to document control methods imposed on the product and process including identification of product features, process control settings to be monitored, measurement methods to be used, sampling sizes and frequencies, and associated control limits. Fundamentally, it is about value-added controls. The control plan details how product quality is controlled and confirmed at each step of the manufacturing process including defining the actions to be taken when the process becomes unstable or non-conforming product is detected. The control plan should be sufficiently detailed to clearly define who is responsible for completing the specified quality control tasks or activities at each stage of the process. Again, we can now see linkages between the process flow diagram, the process failure modes and effects analysis, and the control plan. 
So in summary, process flow diagram breaks the whole process down into discrete steps to enable detailed risk analysis of each step. Process FMEA identifies the potential risk and controls associated in each step and allows prioritization for action. Control plan identifies the controls required for each process step to firstly prevent the potential risks from occurring and secondly identify the controls for each process step which either reduces the chance of the potential risk from occurring or mitigates the impact. AS 13004, new aerospace sector standard created by the AESQ with the target of creating a common aerospace sector approach for its risk identification and control with the goal of zero defects. For further information on AS 13003, please contact Industry Forum. Thank you.